Hello and welcome to the sixth edition of the Good Book Club, a weekly schedule of readings through the Gospel of Luke and the Book of Acts during the seasons of Lent and Easter. I'm so thrilled you are along for this journey as we are headed into the last week of Lent. Yesterday we celebrated Palm Sunday and Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem as well as his betrayal and crucifixion. The lectionary yesterday took us on the journey through Mark's telling of those stories, but this week we will look at Luke's version of those stories, and this week's readings will take us all the way to the end of the Gospel of Luke. So let us take a look at chapters 19 through 22 in Luke's Gospel and see where we are. So chapter 19 opens with the powerful and memorable story of Zacchaeus the tax collector. Now, tax collectors in Jesus' day were not well-loved people. Uh, They were seen as collaborating with their Roman occupiers. Most of the time, they were Israelites collecting taxes for this foreign empire and sending the money far, far away. They were also known for taking more than they were supposed to take, but that was how they, they made their living. But it certainly was not a way to win friends. Now, Zacchaeus either sees Jesus and has a change of heart, or he has always tried to be a noble tax collector. I like to think that he's always tried to be noble, and his uh, climbing up a tree to meet Jesus and to see who Jesus is is a chance for him to uh, tell Jesus who he is and and maybe try to uh, gain favor with Jesus and with, with those who might look to Jesus for authority as well. So he tells Jesus all that he has done, that he gives half of all of his stuff to the poor, and that if he ever were to defraud anyone, he would pay back four times what he had taken from them. Uh, That leads Jesus to declare that salvation has indeed come to his home. Now Luke already tells us that Zacchaeus is very wealthy. So for Jesus to declare salvation upon his home means that Maybe uh, this rich man has done what Jesus has wanted wealthy people to do the entire time, which is to treat other people right and to give generously to those who have less than us. Maybe this guy has found a way for that camel to squeeze through the eye of that needle after all. The Zacchaeus story is followed by the story of a man who went to claim his his land, the land that he had as a royal individual. He left ten servants in charge of his estate and in charge of his money. And when he returns, we hear about how three of them did with his investments. Leaves us to wonder what happened to the other seven, but let's talk about these three. One does really, really great, a thousand times more than he got back. And the other one does pretty good as well, about 500 times what he had invested. But the third, not so much. He buried the money in the ground because he knew the king, the ruler, was a harsh individual. But that, so he is punished for his in, inactions, and the detractors of this ruler are about to meet their end as well. It's really hard to contrast this image uh, with Jesus asking God to forgive his enemies when he's on the cross. And it's almost like Jesus wants to ponder what kind of kingdom we want to live in. Do we want to live in one with harsh, harsh retribution or one with forgiveness and love? Jesus then makes his grand entrance into Jerusalem. And there's a couple of things about this telling that I would like for us to consider. First, in Luke's story, uh, there are no palms, right? We call it Palm Sunday because in Matthew and Mark and John, people have cut down palm branches to lay on the road so that the king or the ruler in this, uh, of, who is coming into town wouldn't get dirty. It was a sign of royalty if, if this, individual, uh, this individual's animal could, could walk on something other than the dirt and the mud that would have been in the street. But in Luke's gospel, there are no palms. People spread cloaks on the ground, but no palms. A slight difference in the telling from uh, the other three gospels. The second thing I want us to consider is that this is the last time in Luke's gospel that we hear from the Pharisees. 
Uh, pretty soon it's going to pick up with the high priests and the chief priests and the temple police and all those kind of folks. So the Pharisees bow out when they tell Jesus to tell, his, to tell the crowd to be quiet. And Jesus says, yeah, but even if they did, the rocks and stones themselves would start to sing. Jesus then proceeds to clear out the temple. And there's no mention of freeing the sacrificial animals like there was in John's gospel or a whip of cords or, he, you know, or any other sort of major violent action. It's almost a, an afterthought of an event, but it's worth noting because it was this kind of raucous behavior that the religious leaders feared with such a huge, uh, heavy Ro- uh, Roman military presence in Jerusalem for the Passover. So the, the, Ro- the Jewish authorities were more concerned about a riot breaking out and all of the Jews being punished, uh, being uh, blamed for it, as opposed to Jesus actually you know, causing a ruckus himself. So all of chapter 20 and 21 are teachings in the temple. And I think that's an important thing that we sometimes lose sight of. Luke reminds us a couple of times along the way that, that, that Jesus is in the temple, but all of these teachings in 20 and 21 take place in Jesus' final week of his earthly ministry. Now, one particular, particular moment I want to highlight is the attempted entrapment over the Roman coin. Is it okay to pay taxes to Caesar? And Jesus asks to see the coin that bears Caesar's image. And when he does that, he's actually highlighting the hypocrisy of those who are asking. Because see, the coin had Caesar's likeness on it. And Caesar was considered divine by the Romans, not just the Caesar at the time, but Caesar's, the, the, the Roman emperors were considered to be divine. So, so for someone to carry an engraved image of, of a false god into the temple was about as close as blasphemy as you could get. But Jesus wanted to call this out without actually saying, you're a blasphemer, but says, show me the coin that you have. And so Jesus is, astonishes them with his teaching and they, they are stopped in their tracks. But yet what Jesus is doing is pointing out uh, how bad the question was to begin with. Now, chapter 21 is known as Luke's little apocalypse. Uh, Jesus foretells about the destruction of the temple, uh, which is a foreboding sort of uh, thing to tell about anyway. But it's important to remember, too, that the Gospel of Luke was written about the time that Jer- Jerusalem was sacked by Rome and the temple had been destroyed. So Jesus' foretelling of that uh, was a pretty prominent thing to highlight in Luke's Gospel. Um, Jesus is, there's a lot of doom and gloom in this particular chapter, especially in the first part of the chapter. Uh, But the second part of the chapter takes on a little glimmer of hope. But that's what an apocalypse is anyway. Uh, It's it's an ending of one thing, be it a violent and destructive sort of end, which brings about something new. So if you hear of wars and rumors of wars and things like that, uh, yes, that is scary and that is awful, but Jesus says, know that, know that I am coming soon after that. No matter how bad or terrible things are, uh, there is this knowledge that God is near and God is present through all of that. And chapter 22 tells us about, G- about Judas and his scheme to hand Jesus over to the high priests. It also gives us uh, Luke's, for, Luke's account of the Last Supper as well. And this is where at the Last Supper, at the Passover meal, this is where we have the the words we use at the Eucharist each week. This is my body given for you. This is my cup. This cup is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as much as Jesus had told the 12 and the other 72 in other places in the gospel to go and to preach and to heal in his name, and he told them to take no staff or no wallet, this time he says, now is the time to be prepared. This is the time to take a wallet, to take a staff. Uh, It's interesting to note if he, he says, 
If you, have, if you don't have a sword, get one and someone says, oh look, here are two swords. In some translations it says that is enough or it is enough. Um, in the common English Bible that I mentioned earlier that I've been reading from, he actually, it actually says enough of that. Uh, as, in, as in, okay, okay, between the 12 of you, two swords is enough. The chapter ends with Jesus' arrest. Uh, he heals the high priest slave who has his ear cut off um, in, the, in the fracas that happens as he's being arrested. Um, it also ends with Peter's denial, which Peter said he absolutely would not, could not, would never do. And yet, boom, 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 three very quick places, um, he ends up denying Jesus, denying that he knows Jesus. I'm sure we've all been there at some point in our lives as well. Um, hopefully we didn't need a rooster to crow to remind us or to call us to those attentions. Um, but it'll be a, a great moment later in the gospel when, when, Luke is, uh, when, um, when Peter is restored back to his ministry. Now next week in chapters 23 and 24, uh, probably the most central to the story of Jesus, Lots of other rabbis had great teachings. Uh, lots of others had healed many people, but none of them rose from the dead. And we will talk about all of that next week. As always, if you have any questions, comments, or wonderings, drop me a line at paulcannady at christchurchnewburn.com. You can also visit www.goodbookclub.org to see a whole schedule of readings, not just for the book of uh, the Gospel of, of Luke, but for the book of Acts that we will start on Easter Sunday. If you find yourself in New Bern, North Carolina during this Holy Week, we hope you will come visit us. You can visit our website, ChristChurchNewBern.com, for a whole schedule of of our worship services uh, during this holy season, uh, beginning with, with Tenebrae at 7 p.m. on Wednesday. We have two uh, Maundy Thursday services, uh, two good, three Good Friday services, uh, and an Easter vigil, as well as three services on Easter Sunday. We hope you will, if you won't join, if you can't join us here, we hope you will uh, worship at a place that is near to you and near to your heart. Have a great week. Have a blessed holy week. Happy reading and go in peace to love and serve the Lord.